The boring tunnel at Giga Texas was designed to help increase the efficiency of moving vehicles from the factory under the road over to the west outbound lot. And through the spring and early summer, things were looking pretty good. But as you can tell, we're now into September and not much progress has been made here on this end of the tunnel. Now, back in June, when the Proofrock 3 emerged in the south extension of Giga Texas, the Boring Company put out this post saying that uh, not only has it emerged in the uh, tech Giga Texas expansion, but the cyber tunnel would be online in July. Obviously, that has not happened. So what is going on? Well, there's a number of things that have happened. One, a natural gas pipeline is being installed. That's affecting this site here. They've moved the Proof Rock 3 over to Las Vegas and have been tunneling in that location. And much of the work is going on in the South Extension to prepare the end of the tunnel for new vehicle operations. However, there was also some problems with the road panels used for the road surface inside the tunnel. So I'd like to talk about that and give you an update. What you see here are the road surface panels. These were lined up in early July, getting ready to be installed into the tunnel. And this diagram from the Boring Company shows where they are installed. It's the bottom part of the tunnel, runs the length of the tunnel as well, and provides the driving surfaces for vehicles inside. Now, these panels use something called fiber reinforcement in the concrete, and that is a way of using short fibers that are randomly oriented and uniformly distributed throughout the concrete during the mixing process and those fibers can be a variety of different kinds of materials. This diagram shows you the comparison between a fiber reinforcement type of slab or panel and a steel mesh reinforcement panel. Now on the bottom of the screen is a link for more information if you would like to get even more than what I'll be showing you here in this video clip. There are many reasons why the Boring Company has chosen to use fiber reinforced concrete for the road surface panels. And here's just a few examples. One is that it reduces or it eliminates traditional meshes or steel reinforcement that is needed for the strength of these panels. It reduces labor costs because it's easier to manufacture and you don't have to set that all up with the forms and the rebar making the panels. And finally, by mixing the concrete and the fiber together, it reduces or eliminates the possibility for the reinforcement to be at the bottom of the slab. And so it gives a uh, opportunity for a reinforced and uniform slab for strength and durability. A number of different kind of mesh materials can be chosen and that's everything from a kind of a thin fiber all the way to steel fibers. And this is an example of what some of these look like and how the slabs or these panels are when they are manufactured. And we've already talked about some of the benefits of using the fiber reinforced concrete. You can see that on the right hand side of the screen and a few more examples of what concrete panels or slabs uh, look like during the manufacturing process and also uh, if you were to look inside how those fibers are kind of laid out and uniform throughout the entire panels. Now that we've discussed the context and background about the fiber reinforced panels, we can come back to the tunnel at Giga Texas and talk about some of the issues that uh, they've experienced along the way. Now, this is a great image of the tunnel just after it was finished with uh, great lighting from the inside. One of the things that you can tell is based on the drilling technique that they use to start the tunneling, there's two different pitches that are evident here on the front face on this west side of the highway. And these two pitches cause some issues with those road surface liners and also with installation of some of the utility pipes. And we'll see that here in a moment. Another thing that uh, this created was a need to modify the uh, end or the uh, entrance here of the tunnel. At the time, there were six of these segments of the tunnel liner as I've indicated in this image. And later on, one of the uh, repairs or the corrections that they made is to remove three of the first rings. And I will show you that as time progresses. 
Two weeks have now passed for this image of the west side entrance of the tunnel. You can clearly see some of the utilities and the pipe work that has been installed on the bottom of the tunnel. This is necessary to prevent the tunnel from flooding and to ensure that it has a proper drainage system. This engineering drawing from the Boring Company shows how it is designed and you can compare with the real life example on the left hand side of the screen. I've also shown the precast concrete row panel, how that would be installed on this particular image. And here is a illustration of what that might look like once that work is completed. At this time, all of the work on the tunnel was progressing quite rapidly, and they were just on the verge of beginning to install these road surface liners, which uh, continue the entire length of the tunnel over to the south extension. By the 31st of July, you can tell that the road surface panels had been completed throughout the length of the tunnel. This is on the west side. Now, great look into the tunnel to see those road surface panels right at the end of the tunnel, extending all the way through to the south extension. And things were looking really great, and I was pretty excited about this because it was close to the predicted July operational date, although probably delayed a little. However, that changed dramatically not only a week later, by the 5th of August, crews had been busy removing those concrete road surface panels. And what I noticed as, as they were coming out of the tunnel, many of them were cracked and showed signs of kind of distress or inability to support the weight or the loading that was going on inside the tunnel. So that deserved a little bit more uh, observation and scrutiny. This image from the 12th of August is a great close-up of one of the broken road surface panels. And the broken edge on the left is a great view of what happened. Now, one of the things that stood out to me is that uh, with the fiber reinforcement, I would have expected, as this example image shows, to see some of the fiber sticking out at that broken edge. But, in fact, I did not. So... What I'm speculating, and it's possible, is that there was some problem with the mix of the fibers, and maybe they weren't put enough of them in, or there was some other problem, and it caused these panels to be weaker than expected, and as load was put onto them, they started cracking right down the middle, as these examples show. Just two days later, on the 14th of August, another major change to this west side tunnel entrance was made, and that was the removal of three of the ring segments. This illustration gives you an idea of what that looks like and how much shorter the tunnel is. This also had the benefit of removing one of those two big pitch changes at this end of the tunnel. And although it's speculation on my part, I think that it's possible that this in addition to the fiber mix and the concrete for those road surface panels uh, contributed to the breaking issue that they had. So anyway, both of these things were happening at the same time, and it would uh, take a few more weeks before I was able to figure out what the uh, plan was going to be, and that required a trip back over to the Boring Company facility in Bastrop, Texas. This is a great short clip by Sean of Airwave Dynamics of the Boring Company facility in Bastrop, Texas. It's about 15 miles or 24 kilometers to the east of Giga, Texas. This is where those uh, road surface panels and tunnel liners are made. Also, the tunnel boring machines are manufactured in that large facility that you see with the Boring Company uh, logo. This also shows where they do some of the testing, training, and manufacturing of those liners. What stood out to me is this section of the yard, and we'll go into this a little bit more in detail. This is a great still image from Sean's video and some of the things that stand out to me. Also, the fact that we can see rebar being used in the new design for the road surface panels for Giga Texas. Now, I put some labels up here just to give you an overall view of what we are looking at. You can tell all of those uh, concrete liners for the tunnel that have been completed, the blue forms are what they use for the concrete manufacturing process. Zooming in closer, this is where those uh, concrete panels for the road surface are being made. There's a form on the ground. There's the rebar cages that are manufactured on the left and more rebar next to the truck. The orange kind of covering, I suspect, is used for the road surface panels curing after they've been poured. And this helps to make sure that it has the proper moisture and temperature during the summer months here at uh, this part of Texas. 
And again, the interesting thing of all of this is showing that they have gone to some sort of rebar reinforcement of these panels. And I think that this is directly related to the cracking issue that we saw earlier over at Giga Texas. Here's a slightly different view. And what I want to point out here, in addition to all of the concrete parts, panels, and liners that have been finished, is this truck that looks like it's waiting for picking up some of these uh, panels. Wouldn't surprise me if we see this truck or several trucks like this arriving over at Giga Texas delivering these panels. So that'll be something that I'll be looking forward to in the coming weeks over at Giga Texas. So there you have it, a quick review of the current status of the Boring Company Tunnel here at Giga Texas, some of the problems that they've encountered along the way, and some additional work that is being done that has kind of delayed them from their hope for July operational date but also some things to look forward to as they continue to make progress. And we hope to start seeing new vehicles go through the tunnel over to the west outbound lot. As always, thank you very much for watching. I very much appreciate it.